Hi again, uh, here we are to continue uh, talking about the slideshow and we in the last video we made some indicators. So in this video I'd like to follow up the indicators and get them to animate, right? So right now we've got the indicators there at the bottom of the screen and we just need to uh, maybe show the, the current selected indicator like with a darker color or a lighter color, right? So uh, let's go to our code here. Currently we're grabbing the indicator container by looking up its class name. And if it doesn't exist, this will be null, right? If it does exist, then we're going to loop through it and make one list item and append it to the indicator container. So that'll generate list items in this thing if it exists, okay? So what do we need to do to highlight the, the indicators? There's a few ways you could handle this. Uh, Bootstrap does it with a class name, right? It moves the class from... from um, element to element, like every time the slide changes. Um, and actually, I like that method a lot. Um, I'm going to actually do it a little differently here. Um, I'm going to do it with a style, so we'll see everything that's happening in the code here. If we do it with a class name, some of the, you know, we'll just be setting the style, but the actual description of what happens with that style would end up in our style sheet, right? And that's kind of nice, but maybe we can refactor to that later. But uh, I think setting the style here will work well and, and be explain what's going on. So in order to do this though, we'll have to have a reference to each of these list items. We've created them here, but these are local variables or you know scope to this block. And when the for loop ends, then we don't have a reference to these any longer. Now again, we could look them up in the container. We could ask the container for a list of children. But I think since we're making them here, we might as well just keep track of them, right? So I'm going to do that this way by making an array called indicators with an S, right? So I'll just make an array, call it indicators. And then in here, after we create an indicator, which will be the li tag, what I'll do is I'll say uh, indicators dot push to add the li tag to this array, right? So now I've got an array of list items. Now these list items are, since we created them with create element and they're not just strings, these are like live DOM elements, right? And the browser keeps track of these. So if I create one here with document, if I create one in the document and then later I append it to the indicator container, this one is, is still the one that's appended. It's the same one, okay? When I go through the loop and I do it again, this one is the second one not the first one, right? Okay. So um, so these are like live DOM elements. And that's kind of the difference between using create element and just inner HTML. Like if I add something with inner HTML, I'm just making a string and then the document is generating elements from that string and we don't actually have a reference to them. Here, I've created a, a, a an actual DOM element, right? And it's an object. It's got all the properties. You could set its class name. You could you know, check its data attributes or add data attributes, right? You could just manipulate this thing just the way you could with any DOM element, and then you can append it, and then we can also, you know, save it in an array and work with it later. Okay, so, so I'll get off my soapbox there. These are pretty good. Sometimes you don't want to use this. Inner HTML is actually faster if you generate a big string with lots of elements in it. It's faster, but this is 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 pretty cool because it gives us like direct access to these elements and we, we, we still retain it, right? So, um, so anyway, now I've got an array of indicators and what I'll want to do is, um, is highlight them like as the slides run, right? So maybe down here on show slide, I'm kind of debating, maybe I should make another function, right? Um, maybe we'll just do it inside here, right? So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to loop through the list of indicators. And if the indicators aren't there, the, the array will be empty, so it won't matter, right? So I'm going to loop through these. I'm going to say, you know, four. Actually, let's use a four each. We did that before, I think, in one of the other videos, right? Or, um, right? So I think I'm going to do this. Let me actually retype that, right? I'm going to say four each. And then I'll type a function in here. So this for each function, you can call it on an array. And, uh, oh, you know, I forget. Oh, yeah, I guess that's fine. Yeah, this will be good. So we'll do uh, for each. 
we call it on an array and we give it a callback function. That's kind of a small theme that's been running through this project. You know, we use the callback up here with the timer, right? So you pass a function in and then the timer calls on it. With for each, uh, you pass a function in and that function is run once for every item in the array. So we call for each on an array. The computer loops through the array and calls this function once for each item it finds in the array. So if I have four slides, it's gonna call this four times. Or if I have four li tags, it's gonna call it four times. And the other thing it does is it passes in the element. So if I put like el here for element, this will be one of the list items the first time, and then it'll be the next list item the second time, and the third time it'll be the third list item, right? So we're just looping through the array, and then it's calling the function and passing one of the elements of the array into this function, and then I can run some code, right? So what I want to do is um, I want to um, highlight the element that's at the index that matches the index variable that we have, right? So that means that I want to say like, hey, if, you know, this element, you know, or the, the current count of, of the for each loop is equal to the index, then I want to say, you know, highlight this element, else don't highlight that element, right? you know, or unhighlight it, you know, maybe we would say, right? Okay, so how are we gonna do that, okay? So the, the function here also gets a second parameter, and that's the index of the element in the array. So essentially it's gonna pass each of the list items here, and then it's gonna give me the index of that list item. So it'll be like zero, one, two, three, right? And so what I can say is I can say, hey, if I equals index, then this is the, the list item that's at, you know, the same index that matches the current index of the slide, in which case I want to say color equals, and then I can set the color. So I think what I'll do is I'll set it to RGBA um, 255, 255 and uh, this is the selected one so I'll do 1.0 and it'll be totally opaque and then for all of the other indicators I'll change the background color to uh, 0.5 right now probably this is probably where maybe bootstrap is doing this a little bit differently because um, if we set these as inline styles, then it's going to be difficult for us to style them differently later, right? But that's okay. Let's just see how this works, and then we can go back and change it. Maybe we could add a class name here instead and then style our class name. So let's give it a try. Let me save that and see what... Oh, yeah. No, I, I guess I got everything here. Um, let's... Uh, I, I thought I forgot something, but I think I got it. Let's try it here. So I'll, I'll refresh... And then we'll see. Oh man, my slides, my indicators are not working. Let's uh, let's check our um, our. Uh, oh, I got an error. Right, no wonder I got a problem. Right, uh, can't find variable on line eighty. Let's go take a look. Right, um, where is my variable line eighty? Element i. Wait a minute. Oh, can't find variable array. Oh, you know, I put array here. This is actually supposed to be, that's my mistake, sorry. Hopefully you caught that, right? It should have been indicators, right? Because this is our array of stuff. I guess I was explaining how array and for each work, but I actually had meant to make it this one. There we go, indicators dot for each. So let's, uh, let's try it now. So I'll refresh, let's see. Um, Oh, there's our first indicator, right? So actually there's one little error, right, is when I start the first time, the very first indicator is not highlighted, right? But after that, they highlight, right? So that's working pretty good, but the very first one isn't, isn't highlighted. You could stop the video here and try and solve that one yourself. You know, that's a pretty good little, like, small challenge to, to do. Why don't you give it a try? And then I'll, um, I'll go over it. Okay, so did you figure that one out? 
Um, let's give it a try. I'm going to go up here and um, look at my indicators. And right here, I've got my if statement. And if the indicator container exists, we're going to loop through all the images and make one li tag. And maybe right after we're all done, let's just highlight the very first one, right? So you know what I'll do is I'll say um, indicators bracket item zero dot style dot you know background color equals um, RGBA two fifty five two fifty five two fifty five and uh, one point uh, zero right. And hopefully that'll do it. Let's save it and give it a give it a test, right? Yeah, there we go. So the first one is highlighted. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you got any questions, please post them to the comments.